Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here. I want to do another product review for you guys today. This is a new piece of equipment that I got a few months ago for some testing and checking out. And uh, I actually have it right here with me. It's this guy. It is the Landpart LA3D three axis gimbal for GoPros. Now there's a lot of different stabilizer gimbals for GoPro cameras out there. I've even done a review test of one before, their HHG01. Um, but this one has some different features that some of those others out there don't have. And I wanna talk to you about it. Now, I just wanna say up front in full disclosure that this unit was sent to me for testing and review by Lampart. I did not buy this and I'm not getting paid to review this. So I'm gonna give you guys my real thoughts and opinions on this little gimbal right here. So let's go ahead and check out the Lampart LA 3D gimbal. So like I've already stated, the Lampart LA 3D gimbal is a three axis gimbal for GoPro cameras. Um, and what it does is it has uh, various different modes, but it basically keeps your camera footage stable while moving in different directions. And it has all three axis, uh, the pitch, yaw, and roll, um, similar to many other gimbals out there on the market. But there are a few things that make this one unique. Um, but before we really get into it, some of you may be asking, why would you want something like this? And when you're working with a GoPro, because it's such a small camera, a lot of times if you hand hold it or hold it on like a selfie stick or some other just uh, grip, you're gonna get some pretty shaky footage. And I went ahead and did a quick side-by-side -side walking around uh, my friend's studio and showing really what a stabilizer like this is going to do for your footage. So you can check out that whole sample video. I'll have a link to that for you guys if you wanna watch it in full, but that's just to give you an idea. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna check out what came in the box when this little guy arrived. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So when the LA3D gimbal arrived at my doorstep, it actually came in this nice little carrying case that holds all of the components that it comes with. So let's take a look inside this case and see exactly what they provided to us. If we open up the case, it's a semi-rigid case with some nice foam insulation. And in there you can see the top unit of the gimbal, which actually separates from the handle. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But there's the handle part that goes right in here. It comes with two batteries already installed. And it also comes with this little extension to add longer battery life. And I'll get into this a little bit later as well. It also comes with a charger for your batteries that runs off of USB power and includes a USB cable for running that. Now it doesn't include any wall adapters, so you're gonna have to provide your own, um, but anything like the ones you use to charge your iPhone or even phone charger USB battery packs will be able to charge these batteries. It also comes with this nifty little cable here that connects the back of the gimbal, has a port that actually connects to the USB port on the GoPro, and the gimbal itself can provide power to your GoPro so that you don't run your GoPro battery down while you're using it. And then the last thing is this extension cable here, and this is something we'll also get into later, but this is a connection extension cable um, that will run between the head unit of the gimbal and the handle and controls uh, down in the handle. Uh, so we'll get into that a little bit later as well. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get your GoPro mounted onto this gimbal, and it's actually very simple. Um, it just fits right into this nice little cradle that's on there, and they have a mounting attachment here that you uh, go ahead and loosen up the screws, tighten the screws down, and that's as simple as it is. Your GoPro is now in place. And if you want to go even further and use that supplied power cable, you just connect that right into the port and then connect it into your GoPro. And it's as simple as that. You're ready to go, um, ready to go off and shooting. Now, in order to get fully off and running with the gimbal, this one is a little different from the previous HHG01 gimbal. You have to push this power button down on the bottom 
and the unit will power up and you'll see a blinking light that'll show you your battery status. But as you can see, the gimbal's not actually on yet. There's actually a series of buttons on the back of this gimbal. And in order to bring it to life and start stabilization, you press and hold the center mode button. And there you go, the gimbal will wake up and now you are stabilized. Now, as I said, there are these buttons on this particular gimbal, which makes it different from the HHG-01, where it was you just pick it up, turn it on, and that's what you get. So this actually has a whole bunch of different options for different modes that you can run this gimbal in. So let me take you through some of those different modes. In your standard mode, when you just click and hold for three seconds and wake the gimbal up, you're in a follow mode that's doing a follow with both your pan and your tilt. So it'll, it'll follow no matter which direction you go. Now, if you click that button twice, you are now in a semi follow mode where your, your pan will follow, but your tilt is locked. So no matter which way you go, it will not tilt up and down with you. And then if you click three times, one, two, three, the gimbal will be in a completely locked mode. So now no matter what I do, the way I had the camera facing is the way the camera will stay. Now it also has uh, various buttons up, down, left and right around that mode dial that also allow you to do other things. So they actually allow you to control things like your pan, your tilt, and they even allow you in modes like mode one to adjust your roll. So you can make sure that you've got exactly level where you want to be. And then you have control of that even while operating. You can change and adjust those. And there is an adjustment dial on the side here to show how quickly those actions take place. So you can adjust the sensitivity and how quickly the gimbal responds when you use those buttons. So the addition of these buttons and the addition of these modes is a huge leap over the previous HHG-01. Gives me a lot more control and I can select whether I want the gimbal to follow me completely or if I want it to just stay exactly where I put it no matter what. So those are some nice options that they've added to this. So one more really cool feature of this gimbal in terms of the modes is the fact that you can actually run this gimbal inverted, upside down. Um, so all you gotta do is power it on from the bottom like I have right now, and you're gonna press and hold this button on the right here for five seconds. And after I press it for five seconds, this little light will turn red, telling me that when I turn it on, it's going to be inverted. So all I have to do is flip the gimbal upside down, hold our mode button to turn us on, and there we go. The gimbal is running upside down and inverted. And in this mode, it still has all of the functions and all of the different modes that we have. You can do a locked off, you can do a pan, tilt, follow. Um, so we have all of our modes, but you have an inverted mode. So this gives you some really cool options, uh, and I'm not sure that I've seen any other of these handheld gimbals that really do this. So obviously since this gimbal uh, comes mounted to a handle, it's obvious that it's gonna be great for use handheld, uh, meaning walking around and getting shots and just holding this by hand. So I went around Washington DC and got some sample shots of using this by hand. And if you wanna check out that full length video, you can go ahead and check that out. I'll pop the link here for you. Um, and it works really well handheld, uh, obviously it's a three axis gimbal, which means it doesn't take care of the fourth axis of vertical, bouncing up and down a little bit as I walk. So it'll take you some practice to get it really smooth, but I mean, it does a pretty good job. Um, all the axis that it's controlling and working on seem to be pretty smooth. So I was pretty happy with the way that it performed. If I could just take that little bounce out of my step, um, that'd be great, but that's on me as the operator to do. So overall it performed really well handheld. Now one of the really cool features of this gimbal has to do with that six foot extension cable that I mentioned came in the box. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to detach the head unit of the gimbal here and have a six foot run to your controller and your battery power right here. 
So you can actually power and control the gimbal from six feet away, which means that now you're no longer restricted to using this only handheld. You now have tons of different ways that you can actually mount this. And one way to do that is there is a quarter 20 mount in the bottom of this. I mean, you can attach this and put it anywhere where you have a quarter 20 mount. Say you get a really long pole or extension, you can put this on the end of that and get some really, really cool footage that you could not get handheld. So I went out and did some tests and saw what kind of footage I could get with that uh, on the end of an eight foot pole actually. And uh, I was really, really impressed with what I was able to pull off. Uh, you guys can go ahead and check out the full length video of that sample. Um, I'll put the link for that as well. Um, but that's just one of the other ways that you can really put this gimbal anywhere and it becomes a lot more versatile when you can detach it from this unit down at the bottom and not go handheld. Another cool feature that really extends the mounting possibilities for this unit is that right here at the back, it actually has a standard GoPro mount, meaning you can attach it to any of your GoPro mounting accessories. So using the uh, either the quarter 20 or the GoPro mount, you can find tons of different ways and places to mount this gimbal and get stabilized footage from vantage points that you probably could not have before. So I think the addition of this GoPro mount is something that's very unique and uh, I, I'm really impressed with it and it has come quite in handy and I keep thinking of new ways every day of where I want to stick this thing to figure out uh, you know, how to get some new dynamic footage. Now the next thing I want to talk about are batteries and powering options for the gimbal unit. Um, like I said, it comes with two batteries in the kit here. Um, they're little LiPo batteries. They are 3.7 volt, 900 milliamp hour batteries. Um, and the model number is 18350. Um, so they do include two of them and they include the charger in the kit um, and these are really really cheap to buy on amazon if you want to get a spare set of batteries so i actually found some that come in even higher uh, milliamp hour ratings that might last a little bit longer um, but i was really happy with the fact that these are really easy to obtain batteries um, and you can you can get a whole bunch of them pretty cheap if you really think you're going to be using this for an extended period of time so that's really cool. Now another thing that I mentioned before is that in the box there is this little threaded extension tube for a battery extension and what you do is you thread the bottom cap off, thread the extension tube on, and you add these larger batteries and then you get something that looks like this. Um, and this is supposed to extremely extend your battery life. Um, I haven't actually tested how long it extends the battery life, um, but it certainly does make it a lot bigger. Um, the only thing is you cannot simply use uh, the included batteries. The included batteries are 18, I think I said 350s. You have to get 18 650 batteries to fit in here. So you can get two of those. Luckily, they're also very cheap on Amazon, but you do have to get a different kind of battery. I thought at first that it would just take four of the original kind of batteries, which is why I ordered an extra set, but it actually will not fit inside uh, of this tube, which is good actually because I read in the manual that that's because this requires a specific voltage. So you need to have just two batteries giving you the voltage. The milliamp hours are more with the bigger batteries, but the voltage has to remain the same, which means there has to be two batteries in there, either the shorter version with two 18350s or the extended version with two 18650s. So don't try cramming different kinds of batteries and different configurations of batteries in there. Even if they might fit, you really run the risk of damaging uh, the gimbal itself or even uh, damaging the LiPo batteries and LiPo batteries can be dangerous. So please don't do that. So now that I've done my whole battery rant, uh, the one thing left is to answer how long do the stock batteries last that come with it. So I actually went ahead and ran a battery test. I set the gimbal up and I just let it run until it completely ran out of juice. 
Now, initially, it was listed that this gimbal is supposed to last two hours on the stock batteries. Um, but while I was testing the unit, Lampart, I was talking back and forth with them. They actually provided me a firmware update uh, to make the gimbal unit as a whole perform better. And after running the battery test, with their new firmware, same stock batteries, I actually got over four hours of battery life out of just the stock 900 milliamp hour batteries. So unless you foresee yourself running around doing a five hour continuous shot with this thing, I think you're gonna be pretty safe with just the stock batteries that come with it. Um, so that's really great to know that they're always improving their product and that they've got the battery life on this thing doubled from what their previous projections were. So I'm really happy with that. So guys, overall, I've been really happy with this unit and with this gimbal. Um, I really like the uh, overall build quality of it. It's, it's kind of hefty. Um, it's completely all made of metal. It has these rubberized grips down here, um, but everything is really well made. The locking mechanism that uh, locks the gimbal head to the powered handle is great. Um, the cable is well made. I don't see any risk of it starting to fray or come apart. Um, and everything is really well made. Even the case that they give you is really well made and I really like it. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with the overall build quality of it and, and the performance of it as well. Um, and I like that Lampart is always working on firmware to make the product better. So I might become even happier with it in the future. Um, but that being said, no product is perfect and I do want to throw out a few things that uh, I'm not really so much a fan of. Um, the first thing is those uh, extended batteries. Uh, I know it's not a huge hassle, but I don't like that to use the battery extension, I have to order other batteries um, of a different size. Because uh, now I'm carting around more batteries with my with my kit and it's more batteries to charge and, and and all that so you know i'm not really a fan of that but like i said i don't even know how much i'll be using the extension if that stock battery life is four plus hours another thing that i'm sort of hot and cold with um, is actually these control buttons at the back while i'm extremely happy that they included these buttons for us to be able to change modes um, and control the gimbal in various settings. Um, I do have some issues with the buttons. They're very stiff, they're very plasticky. Um, they're not like a nice rubber like I kind of expected them to be. Um, and uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult sometimes to remember what all of the buttons do. Sometimes you have to, you hold one and you can calibrate it. Sometimes you hold one and it'll put it into that inverted mode. Sometimes you hold one and it does something else. See, I'm already forgetting. So it's kind of difficult unless you keep the manual with you to remember necessarily what everything does. I'm not sure how they could correct that. Maybe I just need to work on my memory a little bit better. Um, but another issue that I have with the buttons is that they are buttons. I almost wish that they were a joystick. Um, they don't make it very easy. Actually, they make it impossible to move the gimbal in various axis at the same time. So if I go into the locked off mode and say I want to pan and tilt, I, I can't I can't get to both and have both happen at the same time. So I end up using them mainly just to position my camera before I begin shooting rather than to actually use them to perform camera motions. So I feel like if it were a joystick, I would have so much more control and could set that stuff. So guys, there you go. There's my thoughts and my full review of the Lampart LA3D gimbal for the GoPro. Um, like I said, I've been very happy with it. I've spent uh, probably about a month and a half, if not more, uh, taking it around with me, testing it out, making sure that I learned it inside and out. Um, it's, uh, it's great. It has so many versatile options for where you can mount it um, and how you can use it just going beyond hand holding it um, with that extension cable. 
and, uh, and with the quarter 20 thread and the GoPro mount. So if you do a lot of uh, action sports stuff or just like running around and getting cool angles with your GoPro, uh, this might be something you want to check out. So guys, uh, I'll throw up the information for Lampart where you can go ahead and check out this gimbal for yourself and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the review. If you did, please go ahead, like it, subscribe to the channel, and I'll hopefully have many more reviews like this coming for you guys in the near future.